हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई होप यू आर ऑल डूइंग गुड्स माय नेम इज दिलीप एंड आई विल बी टेकिंग केयर ऑफ योर टैक्सेशन पेपर सो आई विल बी टेकिंग केयर ऑफ बोथ डायरेक्ट टैक्सेस एज वेल एज इनडायरेक्ट टैक्सेस सो देर इज अ पेपर कॉल्ड एज टैक्सेशन इन योर सिलेबस एंड आई विल बी टेकिंग केयर ऑफ दैट एंटायर टैक्सेशन पेपर सो आई होप यू एंजॉय द जर्नी विथ मी सो लेट अज स्ट्राइट अवे स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन ऑन दिस ब्यूटिफुल पेपर कॉल्ड एज टैक्सेशन आई विल गिव ए लिटल इंट्रोडक्शन विथ रेस्पेक्ट टू दिस पेपर एंड देर आफ्टर लेट अस कंटिन्यू एंड डिस्कस द पेपर एज ए होल सो दिस क्लास इज स्पेसिफिकली स्पेसिफिकली रिकॉर्डेड फॉर सी ए इंटरमीडिएट स्टूडेंट्स सी एम ए सॉरी फॉर सी एम ए इंटरमीडिएट स्टूडेंट्स हु आर राइटिंग देयर एग्जामिनेशन इन जून ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी थ्री सो दिस इज स्पेसिफिकली रिकॉर्डिंग फॉर दिस स्टूडेंट्स हुआ राइटिंग देर एग्जामिनेशन इन जून ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी थ्री सी फॉर यू गाइज फॉर यू गाइज फाइनेंस एक्ट फॉर यू गाइज द बजट द बजट विच वॉज कंडक्टेड लास्ट ईयर द बजट विच वॉज कंडक्टेड इन फर्स्ट फेब्रवरी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू इज एप्लीकेबल टू योर एग्जामिनेशन वेदर यू आर राइटिंग एग्जामिनेशन इन द in june month or december month this is the budget which you have to study meaning the recent budget which uh, which was conducted in february month in the in the month of february 2023 is not applicable for your examination whether you are writing your examination in june month or in the month of december so this class will specifically be for those students who are writing their examination in june 23 or december 23 so the syllabus which i'll be taking will be your latest amended syllabus so the new syllabus which is there so syllabus of 2022 so this is the new syllabus which is applicable for those who are opt who are writing their examination from this june onwards june 23 onwards who are writing their examination for them the new syllabus syllabus 2022 is applicable before this the syllabus of 2016 was applicable to you so now in this syllabus no in this syllabus syllabus of 2022 there is a change which has been uh, there is a small change in your uh, paper taxation uh, paper specifically now before there were two separate paper called as direct taxes and indirect taxes both of this paper was for 100 marks this was before this was when sir this was before 2016 so let me just give you a small background so after that let us start the discussion on the uh, actual uh, discussion on the subject so this was for those people who had the syllabus of 2016 see before 2016 in the sense the syllabus the students for whom the syllabus applicable was 2016 okay so going forward going forward that is from this june 23 onwards june 23 onwards new syllabus is applicable to you all new syllabus is applicable to you all so those who are writing your examination in the new syllabus for them there is a paper called as paper number 7 this paper number 7 is of what sir which subject is this of sir this is of taxation this paper is for 100 marks this paper paper number 7 is for 100 marks wherein this paper consists of two things it consists of direct taxes and it uh, consists of indirect taxes section a of your syllabus is direct taxes and section b or <coughs> of your syllabus is indirect taxes wherein your direct taxes will be for 50 marks and indirect taxes also will be for 50 marks so before you had a separate paper for 100 100 marks direct taxes and indirect taxes now it is not like that now it is merged both direct taxes and indirect taxes has been merged and there is one single paper which you have for your examination which is called as taxation wherein 50 marks is for direct taxes and 50 marks is for indirect taxes your indirect taxes paper is further divided into gst and customs this paper is further divided into what sir gst and customs wherein gst is for 40 marks and customs is for 10 marks this indirect tax paper is further divided into two arrow marks that is gst as well as customs wherein gst is for 40 marks and customs is for how many marks sir 10 marks your indirect taxes sorry direct taxes that is income tax <coughs> see direct when i say about when i say direct tax 
what i mean over here is income tax and your institute also what they are trying to mean over here is income tax and when they talk about indirect taxes they mean they are talking about gst as well as customs your income uh, your income tax paper or direct tax paper has no division as such but from studying perspective they have divided the syllabus into three modules module number one module number two and module number three module number one consists of you uh, consists <coughs> uh, consist uh, the details of uh, the provisions with regard to the basics of taxes residential status etc module number two consists of your heads of income you have totally five uh, different heads of income five heads of income about that completely it is given in module number two and module number three consists of your other aspects of income tax so totally your income tax paper is divided into three modules one two three wherein module number one consists of 10 marks module 2 consists of 25 marks and module 3 consists of 15 marks so this is how they have divided the they have given the weightage for your <coughs> Uh, direct taxes and indirect tax paper indirect taxes 2 arrow marks gst as well as customs gst will come for uh, 40 marks and customs will come for 10 marks and your income tax paper sir when we talk about your income tax paper the major allocation of marks is for your heads of income you have totally five heads of income for uh, these five heads of income will carry almost 20 uh, 50 percent of your marks will come from here only meaning out of 50 50 percent of 50 is 25 marks so 25 marks will come from your heads of income and other topics are have the remaining weightage so th this is about your syllabus basically the new syllabus which is applicable from june 23 and onwards examination june 23 and onwards examination so this class which you are seeing right now is specifically made and recorded for those students who are writing their examination in june and december 23 so all the amendments which are applicable for your examination have been taken care of and are covered for, uh, in this particular classes so this is the first class wherein <coughs> we will be learning about the basic of taxes and we will start our discussion with direct taxes we'll start our discussion with direct taxes then we'll uh, discuss the indirect tax part of your syllabus so how are we going to go through this uh, subject sir how are we going to go through this particular subject for 100 marks first we are going to start with direct taxes income tax and then we are going to do your indirect taxes which is nothing but gst and customs so this is how this is the format which we are going to follow for learning this particular subject i hope this basic background about your subject is very clear to you all and one doubt normally a student always has is sir what sir <clears throat> we have come across or we see the newspaper or when we when we see news or when we see uh, when we scroll over uh, say instagram reels or some uh, youtube uh, videos etc we come across that there are lots of changes which is happening under uh, taxation sir every day there are every day or maybe every month there are few changes which is happening in the tax laws so sir are they all changes applicable to us for our examination do we have to read all the changes which are made in the law on daily basis answer is no so let me make you very clear that the amendments no i mean uh, about amendments or notifications normally whatever amendments and notifications or circulars which is issued issued by the government they are normally not applicable to you for your examination what your institute says institute says whatever amendment changes were made six months before your examination whatever changes were made six months before your examination those changes will be applicable to you for your examination for your examination so if you are writing the examination in june 23 what will be the cutoff date for you sir if i am writing in june then six months before june is sir december yeah so 30th november 2022 all the changes made in the law tax laws before this date 30th november 2022 will be applicable to you for your examination for your examination sir what if i am writing my examination in december 
so if you are writing your examination in december then let us go six months back six months before your examination six months before your examination means what sir six months before your examination means six months before your examination means the cutoff date for you will be 31st may 2022 so 2023 sorry 31st may 2023 so the uh, coming uh, may month 31st may 2023 so whatever changes is made in the law uh, during this period 31st may 2020 till 31st may 2023 will be applicable to you for your examination now please note sir in that case the budget which just now came sir the budget which came on 1st february 2023 will this budget be applicable to us the budget which came one month before or the budget which came uh, in the month of <coughs> february first february will the will this be applicable for those who are writing their examination in december answer is no answer is no answer is no you will understand why it is no because uh, when we are studying the subject you will understand why it is no budgets etc are applicable see whatever budget is uh, whatever budget has been issued by the institute uh, by the government no whatever budget the government announces the central government announces they will be applicable from 1st of april of, of coming financial year so the budget will be conducted in the month of february so from 1st of april of next financial year so 1st april 2023 to 31st March 2024 this budget will be applicable this will be applicable so why is it so how is it happening etc will uh, will anyways learn it as and when we are uh, into the subject so presently I'm uh, let me just clear you that the budget which came on 1st February 2023 is not applicable for the students who are writing their examination in the month of June as well as in the month of December 2023 okay i hope this small query which normally students has is very clear to you all now question uh, talking about the question uh, exam question paper pattern the institute has not yet released the pattern how they are going to ask you the questions whether there will be same uh, 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 objective mc M mcq type questions true or false fill in the blanks match the followings or not because because this subject was before this subject was for 100 100 marks now they have merged gst uh, they have merged direct taxes and indirect taxes and there is one paper for 100 marks whether you will have same match the following true or false MC, uh, mcqs etc that they have not yet clarified so once they clarify anyways you will come to know about it but yeah definitely you will have for 20 marks definitely you will be having mcqs match the followings or fill in the banks types of questions but what questions you will be having whether you will be having match the following or true or false or not that we will come to know maybe in a month's time by april end or may uh, by uh, by may mid they will announce about the exam question paper pattern okay so this is about the notification amendments which are applicable to your examination and we have seen what is the uh, weightage or, or how much marks this paper is for and how much weightage is given for each of the sub subjects in this particular paper now without wasting a single second let me straight away start the discussion on this beautiful uh, topic of taxation before starting the discussion i would like to ask you a question about what do you mean by tax tell me what do you mean by tax when i say the word tax what is that first thing which comes to your mind when i say the word tax what is that first thing which is coming to your mind what do you mean by tax sir tax is the money which we are paying to the government sir sir tax is something which government is taking from us from our earnings sir sir tax is some money which we have to pay to the government whenever we are taking any product or services etc these are the different things maybe which is coming to your mind now what is tax basically see what is tax basically see basically speaking government needs money government needs money sir why government needs money now say today after the class today after the class just do one thing just go outside your house 
or if you are at library just go out the uh, go outside the library or wherever you are studying please go outside the institute etc you just go walk around you just walk around when you walk around you will be seeing beautiful street lights you you will be seeing beautiful street lights you will be seeing beautiful roads which are constructed you will be seeing beautiful roads which are constructed you will be seeing some highways some bridges etc which is there across your houses if you are staying in some metropolitan city or uh, a city which has metro also you will be seeing that in your city there is metro rail facility available etc so when you go around you will be seeing that there are government schools wherein free education are provided when you are going around moving around you will see that there are government hospitals where where their free treatment are being provided correct there are government schools there are government hospitals there are infrastructure facilities which has been developed for us etc now this street light which is there no this street light see whatever electricity bill is coming whatever light you are consuming at your house for that you will get a separate electricity bill and that bill is paid by you or your parents correct that electricity bill because it is consumed by you you are going to pay for that electricity charges now this streets etc if you see the, the these roads etc are cleaned on maybe daily basis or weekly basis by few people few people come and they clean this particular uh, your area and many people a uh, few people come and they take garbages from your houses and from the uh, from respective areas etc if you see that there are uh, roads every two three years once or these roads are re laid down uh, if you see there are government schools and colleges which are which are providing you free education government hospitals which are providing uh, providing you free healthcare services there are huge amount of people who are uh, who are taking care of entire india who are uh, been uh, who are uh, at the border area and who are taking care of our defense facility etc now how do you think money comes from how do you think these government schools are run how do you think these electricity which are there the park which is there near your house how do you think that is maintained don't you think that they also need money don't you think the electricity poles which are there outside your house obviously light is consumed over there that electricity bill has to be paid by someone the government hospitals the free facilities which they are providing free medicines which they are providing free vaccination which they are providing don't you think money is required for getting that medicine also obviously they will need money no obviously they will need money no that money which they need that money which they need that money which they need that money they are taking from us that money which they need they take that money from us in the form of tax so government needs money government needs money now government does not go somewhere and work so what government will do for this money they will check for these sources now what are the different sources from which government will get money sir what are the different sources from which government will get money see there are government companies there are government companies these government companies are working and they are making some money for example there is hal for example there is lic life insurance corporation for example there uh, there is bhel etc these government companies are working and whatever revenue they are generating they are going to use it government sometimes when they need money they take loan if the requirement is huge they will take loan from world bank they are going to take loan from outside etc similarly one more source of revenue to the government one more source of revenue to the government is tax government also takes money from us government also takes money from us the people who are there in india from them also the government is going to collect some money this money which government is taking from us they are going to take it as 
tax they are going to collect this money from us in the form of tax see it is not a donation some uh, it is not a donation which any person is going and voluntarily paying it to the government no 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 government has made some provisions government has laid down some law because of which government ha has got the right to collect taxes from us government has got some right to collect taxes from us so this money which government is collecting from us this money which government is collecting from us is collected by in the form of taxes so sir what is tax sir basically basically tax is one of the important source of revenue to the government basically what is tax sir what do you mean by tax tax is one of the important source of revenue to the government one of the important source of revenue to the government is what sir tax now government uh, provides at various facilities as as i uh, let me just give a simple example to you all uh, you all know that few a few years back the uh, there was a huge impact throughout the world because of covid now during this covid there was vaccination facilities which were uh, there were uh, lots of countries uh, which made their own vaccines same india also made some vaccines now if i want to go and take this vaccine vaccine so if i go to a private hospital they would have charged me uh, 780 rupees or maybe 1260 rupees depending upon whether you are going for covid shield or covax uh, co vaccine correct so whether whichever medicine you are taking if you go to a private hospital that private hospital that private clinic etc they would have charged you some money for this particular vaccination but if the same vaccination is taken by you from a government hospital they would have not charged anything from you they would have not charged even 1 rupees from you how do you think this vaccination is being procured by them see a private company a private hospital for providing the same vaccine they are charging some money from you don't you think that this vaccination is also procured by government hospitals also don't you think that they also need money 100% yes they need money but then this money no government is indirectly collecting from you government is directly and indirectly collecting money from you in the form of tax which they are using for your own benefit this tax whatever government is collecting from you this tax is completely used by government for your own benefit government is going to use this tax for your own benefit so the tax the taxes which are which you are paying to the government the taxes are one of the important sources of revenue to the government it is the money which you are paying for various facilities which is provided by the government to you they are giving you the road the, they are giving you the facility of uh, uh, say uh, walking in a beautiful garden etc for all these different facilities infrastructure defense uh, schools colleges etc they are charging some money from you they are charging in the sense they are not directly taking okay you are walking on the road no please pay me the tax no no they are uh, they are taking some money from you that money is taken from you in the form of tax so what is tax sir tax is one of the important source of revenue to the uh, government it is a pecuniary it is a pecuniary burden pecuniary burden which is laid upon individuals and property owners burden which is laid upon individuals and property owners sir meaning what sir it is a monetary amount it is a money which you have to pay which individuals or property owners have to pay to the government sir is this tax voluntary or compulsory the, sir you tell me you only tell me this sir whether this particular tax is voluntary or compulsory see voluntary means there is an like you go to a temple you find an hundi you put the money that is your voluntary donation means voluntary is this voluntary no if it becomes voluntarily you no know, if tax becomes voluntary no one is going to pay so it is a compulsory extraction of law it is not voluntary it is compulsory extract extraction of law it is something which every person has to pay sir every person has to pay yeah yes every person has to pay sir i have a little brother sir who is only five years old does he also have to pay the taxes answer is yes sir my father he is 50 years old sir does he also have to pay the taxes answer is yes sir my grandmother she is not working anywhere sir she is sitting at house sir does she she uh, she is she uh, she 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 is only into uh, worshipping etc sir sir does she also has 
हैज टू पे द टैक्सेस आंसर इज शी आल्सो हैज टू पे द टैक्सेस सर माय एल्डर ब्रदर जस्ट uh i got a baby uh, baby sir they uh, they just got a baby now sir so my elder brother whose baby is just one day old sir does he also has to pay the tax answer is yes he also has to pay the taxes each and every person in india has to pay the taxes each and every person in india has to pay the taxes sir how sir how 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 tell me how my five, five year uh, 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 old brother is paying taxes to the government see your five year old brother he will be purchasing some chocolates he will be eating some uh, biscuits etc he will be uh, eating some uh, juice etc uh, he will be drinking some juice or he will be eating some chips etc now whenever he is purchasing the chocolate whenever he is purchasing that biscuit he is contributing towards tax with you just see the next time whenever your brother is purchasing or your sister is purchasing some biscuit you say just see behind that wherever the price of that uh, biscuit is written they will write say parleji biscuit mrp rupees 10 in bracket they will write inclusive of all taxes meaning that 10 rupees biscuit which you are purchasing no which you are purchasing from a vendor that person is also collecting taxes from you and he is going to pay the taxes to the government so it is each and every person directly or indirectly is contributing towards the growth uh, growth of economy growth of india and that contribution which is done by them is done in the form of tax it is done in the form of tax i hope you have understood the basic meaning of taxes you have understood the basic meaning of tax just like a family to run a family the family needs some money to run india also to run india also government needs money this money which government needs they are collecting from all of us individuals of india in the form of tax now the question which arises is sir how how many types of taxes are there sir what are the different types of taxes now the second question which is coming to my mind is sir please tell me how many types of taxes are there sir we understood we understood that yeah tax pins important source of revenue to the government the government needs money for undertaking various different activities that money which government needs they are collecting from us in the form of tax but sir how many types of taxes are there sir can you please tell us how many types of taxes are there see taxes are basically of two types one is called as direct tax another one is called as what sir indirect tax taxes are basically of two types direct taxes and indirect taxes sir direct tax means tax which is directly paid to the government indirect tax means tax which is indirectly paid to the government ah sir what do you mean by this direct tax indirect tax tax are of two types basically tax are of two types direct taxes and indirect taxes sir what do you mean by direct tax direct tax is a tax wherein the incidence of the tax and the impact of the tax the incidence of the tax and the impact of the tax is on same person in case of direct taxes what happens sir the incident and impact of tax is on same person whereas in case of indirect taxes the incident and impact is on two different person incident and impact is on two different person is on different person sir what do you mean by this what do you mean by this direct taxes says direct taxes for exa example for direct taxes is income tax example for direct tax is what sir income tax and example for indirect tax is what sir example for indirect tax is your gst okay so direct taxes says direct taxes says the incident and impact is on same person meaning what sir i am a person who is earning an income i have to pay the taxes to the government i am earning the income i have to pay taxes to the government who is telling direct taxes i am earning the income i have to pay the taxes incidence is on me and impact is also on me incidence i have earned the income i am putting that income in my pocket i have to pay the 
taxes also to the government incidence is on me and the final impact of payment of taxes is also on me say for example i am earning 10 lakh rupees government says dilip you will have to pay 10 percent of as your income tax so i am going to pay how much sir 1 lakh rupees out of the 10 lakh rupees which i have earned i have to pay 1 lakh rupees to the government the incidence of the tax and the impact of paying that particular tax incidence was on me when i earned the impact uh, when i earned uh, when i earned the income and the impact of making the payment of taxes is also on me whereas indirect taxes does not say that indirect taxes what happens incidence is on one person impact is on another person incidence is on one person impact is on another person meaning what sir i have a company called as priya saris i have a sari shop i have a sari shop called as priya saris i am selling the sari to you you came to priya saris you came to priya saris you purchase a sari worth rupees 10000 from priya saris you purchase a sari worth rupees 10000 from priya saris assuming the rate of uh, tax for sari is 10% let us assume that the GST rate for sari is 10%. So when you are purchasing the sari from me, no, what I am going to do, I am going to charge you 10,000 rupees for that sari and collect a 10% tax from you. So totally how much money you are going to pay me? Totally you are going to pay me 11,000 rupees. Totally how much money you are going to pay me? Totally you are going to pay me 11,000 rupees. So what has happened over here? When I sold the product to you, the incidence of tax was created when i sold the product to you the incidence of tax was created but did i pay the tax no i collected the taxes from you this money which i collected total 11000 rupees which i am going to take from you 10000 i am going to keep it for myself and 1000 i am going to pay to the government this 1000 rupees which is there i am going to pay it to the government so in case of indirect taxes what is happening sir the incidence was created at the time of sale at the time when i sold the product to you the incidence of tax was created but the impact is on whom sir the impact is on the purchaser the impact is on the recipient or the purchaser in other words they also say in other words they also say that in case of direct tax burden is on same person In other words, they also say that here the burden is on same person here, burden is on different person. Meaning what sir, in case of income tax or direct taxes, burden cannot be shifted whereas in case of indirect taxes, burden can be shifted. Sir, what do you mean by this burden can be shifted, burden cannot be shifted? Meaning, I am earning the income, I have to pay to the, uh, taxes to the government. I am earning the income and I have to pay the taxes to the government. The burden is not being shifted. I am earning the income. Who is earning the income? Dilip is earning the income and Dilip has to pay the taxes to the government. Dilip is earning the income, Dilip has to pay the taxes to the government. I earn 10 lakh rupees, I have to pay 10% taxes to the government. I have to pay 1 lakh rupees from my own pocket. First, I earn 10 lakh rupees out of this 1 lakh I am going to pay to the government as taxes the burden of paying is on me the burden of uh, the burden of payment of taxes is on whom sir it is on me I cannot shift the burden on someone else I have earned though I should only pay the taxes who is telling direct taxes is telling whereas indirect taxes it is not like that in case of indirect taxes it is not like that let me take an example of a supply chain let me take an example of a supply chain Say, there is a manufacturer, there is a wholesaler, there is a retailer and there is final consumer. The manufacturer is going to manufacture a product. Once the product is manufactured by him, he is going to sell it to the wholesaler. Wholesaler then he is going to sell it to the retailer. Retailer is going to, uh, sell, uh, retailer is going to sell it to the final consumer. Assuming wholesaler, manufacturer manufactured a TV, cost of manufacture is 100 rupees. And let us assume that the tax rate is 10% for simplicity. For calculation purpose, let us assume tax rate is uh, 10%. Now, when the manufacturer is going to sell this TV, he is going to collect from the wholesaler 10% as 
tax so how much he is going to collect totally he is going to collect 100 rupees for the tv and 10 rupees towards tax this tax this tax he is going to pay to whom sir government now the question is is the manufacturer paying this tax from his own pocket no the manufacturer is collecting this money from the wholesaler then he is going to make the payment to the government manufacturer first collects from the wholesaler then he will pay to the government similarly now the wholesaler is going to sell the product to the retailer assuming wholesaler purchased it for 100 rupees he makes some profit of say uh, 20 rupees so his cost of goods sold is 120 now he is going to sell this product for 120 when he is going to sell it for 120 he has to pay taxes also 10 percent is the tax so tax is 10 percent so totally how much he is going to collect from retailer he is going to collect from retailer how much sir 132 rupees now when the wholesaler see wholesaler has collected 132 rupees out of which what he is going to do 120 he is going to keep it for himself and 12 rupees he is going to pay to the government this 12 rupees which is there no this is the tax which is collected by him on this particular sale on this particular supply which he is going to pay to the government so what is happening manufacturer shifted his burden to the retailer retailer shift uh, sorry wholesaler wholesaler shifted his burden to the retailer then further in the supply chain the retailer is going to sell the product to the final consumer he is going to take the money from him pay the taxes to the government keep the balance amount with himself so in case of in case of what sir in case of direct taxes burden cannot be shifted the person who is earning he only has to make the payment of taxes to the government whereas in case of indirect taxes it is not like that the burden is shifted by one person to another person then the final burden is on whom sir the final burden is on final consumer the final impact or burden is on whom sir final consumer now if i want to explain this concept in a simple language to you direct taxes say for example you are not feeling well say for example you are not feeling well you will go to you are going to hospital you are not feeling well you are going to hospital doctor says i will have to put an injection to you i will have to put an injection to you the doctor puts an injection to you the pot doctor puts an injection to you he is putting an injection to you you are feeling the pain he is putting an injection to you and you are feeling the pain this happens where sir in case of direct taxes incident impact is on same person the injection is put on you and the pain is also felt by you only incident impact is on same person now let us change the example let us take into consideration that your girlfriend is not feeling well see please note if you are a girl who is watching this video you can assume that your boyfriend because i uh, see when i am speaking i will obviously speak from the angle of boy assuming that my girlfriend is not feeling well my girlfriend is not feeling well i am taking my girlfriend to the hospital my, i am taking my girlfriend to the hospital doctor says dilip 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 i will have to put an injection to her doctor is putting an injection to my girlfriend i am feeling the pain doctor is putting the injection to my girlfriend i am i and i am feeling the pain incidence is over there but impact is over here this happens in this happens in indirect taxes in case of indirect taxes what will happen incident and impact is on two separate person two different person two different person to separate person now one more difference between direct taxes and indirect taxes is that in case of direct taxes the nature of direct taxes is progressive direct taxes are progressive in nature whereas indirect taxes are regressive in nature indirect taxes are what sir regressive in nature direct taxes are progressive in nature indirect taxes are regressive in nature sir what do you mean by this direct taxes are progressive in nature indirect taxes are regressive in nature meaning meaning what direct tax says is see what direct tax says is progressive in nature and regressive in nature what direct tax says is say for example Say for example, this is a beggar, so this is that, uh, I mean that vessel which he holds that katori, whatever they call it as, and this is say Mukesh Ambani. 
ओके दिस इज अ बेगर एंड दिस इज मुकेश अंबानी नाउ माई क्वेश्चन टू यू इज मुकेश अंबानी एंड बेगर will they both be paying the same amount of income tax to the government will they both be paying assuming beggar earns 1 lakh rupees in a year and mukesh ambani earns a 1000 crore rupees in a year okay tell me the amount of income tax which is paid by mukesh ambani and the amount of income tax which is paid by beggar will it be same will it be same answer is absolutely absolutely no sir it it may be possible that beggar is not paying the taxes at all because his income is below the limit of tax the the income tax is levied if your income crosses 2.5 lakh rupees sir his income is within the limit sir therefore he does not have to pay any taxes at all therefore the beggar will not have to pay any tax at, at all but when we come when we talk about mukesh ambani he will have to pay huge amount of taxes because his income is more see in income taxes what they have done is they have given slab rates they have given a slab they have given a slab they say up to 2.5 lakhs if your income is how much up to 2 lakh 50000 you don't have to pay any taxes to me if your income is from 2.5 lakhs to 5 lakhs pay me 5% if your income is from 5 lakhs to 10 lakhs pay me 20% if your income is more than 10 lakhs pay me 30% so if you are seeing over here if you are observing over here as and when as and when your income is increasing as and when your income income is increasing the amount of tax which you have to pay also increases this happens in direct taxes as and when your income increases the amount of tax which you have to pay also increases this happens in case of what sir this happens in case of direct taxes whereas whereas income uh, indirect taxes does not say that same in, in, in direct taxes says my nature is regressive the nature of indirect taxes is what sir it is regressive indirect taxes says my nature is what regressive say for example a parleji biscuit now assuming this is a parleji biscuit of rupees 10 mrp of this biscuit is how much sir rupees 10 and let us assume that this includes rupee 1 as tax as you all know mrp means maximum retail price in bracket you would have seen uh, you would have seen they would have written inclusive of all the taxes inclusive of all the taxes now assuming this parleji biscuit which is sold for rupees 10 has 1 rupee tax in it 1 rupees tax in it now whether beggar is going to purchase this parleji biscuit or mukesh amman is going to purchase this parleji biscuit the amount of tax which they have to pay is same sir why sir mukesh amman a big person sir he is a very rich person sir he has to pay more taxes no indirect taxes say no 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 i don't do any discrimination i don't do any discrimination i don't care whether you are a rich fellow or you are a poor fellow whether you are a girl or a boy whether you uh, earn lot of money or you don't earn at all you will have to pay me the same amount of taxes irrespective of your earning capacity irrespective of your earning capacity the amount of taxes which you have to pay me will be the same the amount of taxes which you have to pay me will be the same who is telling this this is been told by whom sir this is been told by this is been told by your indirect taxes why sir because the nature of indirect taxes is regressive because why sir because indirect taxes are regress regressive in nature they don't do any discrimination here the tax rate is not depending upon income it is not depending upon your capacity or your capability to pay if you are capable to pay more i will take more taxes from you no 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 it is not like that that happens in case of income tax in case of direct tax as and when your income is In, uh, income increases the amount of taxes which you have to pay also increases this happens where sir this happens in case of direct taxes so as of now we have understood two things as of now we have understood what sir we have understood the meaning of tax what do you mean by tax it is the important source of revenue to the government and we have understood the meaning of types of taxes see uh, we can write some 10 more differences but these are sufficient these are sufficient for your understanding incident impact on same person progressive in nature and regressive in nature and one is income tax one is uh, gst and one more point i will just uh, tell you that direct taxes are levied on income these taxes which are there direct tax okay direct taxes these taxes are levied on income whereas indirect taxes are levied on 
goods and or services these taxes the indirect taxes are not on income meaning what sir so if i am earning an income i will have to pay the taxes if that income crosses a specified limit if i am earning the income i have to pay the taxes whereas indirect taxes says see i am product specific if there is a product for which tax is applicable you have to pay the gst as uh, let us take an example of gst if there is a product for which gst is applicable then you will have to pay the gst i don't care whether you are making money or not meaning i purchased a product for 10 rupees i sold it for 10 rupees i don't care i don't care you will have to pay the taxes you will have to pay the taxes because in the gst or indirect taxes are based on goods and services i don't care whether you are earning money or not out of selling a particular product if there is a mouse and if that mouse is taxable if the if there is a gst which is applicable on the mouse if you sell this mouse you will have to pay the taxes if there is a mobile phone you sell this mobile phone you will have to pay the taxes if there is a pencil if there is a pen if you are selling this pen pencil uh, then if there is a gst applicable on this product you will have to pay the direct taxes to me if there is a product for which gst is not applicable you don't have to pay any taxes for that particular product so here here indirect taxes are good on goods and services it is on commodities and services whereas income tax or direct taxes are levied on income of a person direct taxes are levied on income of a person okay so we have understood what do you mean by tax and types of taxes now let us just see few constitutional provision with respect to taxation constitutional see there is something called as constitution of india we don't have to dig into what is the meaning of constitution of india etc from our taxation perspective there are few things which are important so we will be discussing only that constitution of india now now the question which arises over here is sir government is collecting taxes from us who gave government the permission to collect the taxes say for example you are walking on the roads you are walking on the road you are walking on the streets and some person comes to you he says hey 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 listen to me hey, hey come here come here come here hey please please pay me some tax hey, hey please pay me some tax you will ask him hey friend please tell me what uh, what money do you need why are you asking this particular money from me what type of tax do you need you please tell me he says no 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 just like that i want some money from you i want some taxes from you you'll ask him hey listen to me carefully tell me why do you want money who gave you the permission to take money from me i am just walking on the road and you are telling me to pay the money no 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 you are looking very beautiful so because you are looking very beautiful i want to collect some beauty tax from you you will tell are you mad are you mad are you a gube are you a gube how can you collect these taxes from me who gave the permission to uh, to you to collect these taxes from me for example on the streets there are policemen now a person is riding the vehicle without helmet so the policeman catches him and he has to pay some fines etc now the policeman has the right no he has the authority to collect some money from him no no if if someone does some traffic violation the policeman has that authority that right to collect money from him that right to collect money from him similarly similarly sir who gave the permission who gave the permission to collect the taxes now government is collecting taxes from us obviously there will be something there will be some kind of law or someone who would have given the permission to the government to collect the taxes now in india in india that someone is constitution of india in india no in india you cannot make any law unless until permission is taken from constitution of india you will be authorized to make a law in india only if the constitution is allowing you to make such law meaning if you are making a law in india and if the constitution of india says no you cannot make such kind of law that law is void that law is ultra wide ultra virus to a constitution it cannot be correct that law will not be correct in india so so the constitution of india is what sir it is the supreme law it is the supreme law or we can also call it as mother law it is the mother law meaning if you want to make any type of law if you want to make any type of 
if you want to pass any type of law in india first you will have to take the permission from whom will i have to take the permission sir you will have to take the permission from the constitution of india constitution of india now in our constitution of india there are various articles there is a preamble it is divided into uh, some 22 parts and there are uh, so, articles in constitutions etc now from our taxation point of view there are three articles which are very important for us from our taxation point of view there are three articles which are very important only three articles there are three articles very which are very important for us from our taxation point of view from our taxation point of view there are three articles which are very important article 265 article 246 and article 245 article 265 says no tax can be levied or collected no tax can be levied or collected unless there is an authority of law unless there is an authority of law meaning if you want to collect any taxes in india you will first have to take the permission you will have to first get the authority you will have to first take the permission you will have to first take the authority unless until there is an authority we cannot collect any taxes therefore we have this income tax law because of which income tax is collected we have this uh, say excise duty law because of which excise duty is collected we have this customs law because of which custom duty is collected etc Article 245 says article 245 says if you want to make any law for whole or any part of india if you want to make any law for whole or any part of india then the central government or union of india has the power who has the power to make the law for whole or any part of india the central government the central government has the power to make law for the entire india or any part of india for whole of india or any part of india similarly the state government has the power to make law for whole or any part of that respective state so who can make the law for their own state the state government also called as legislature of state who has the power to make law for whole or any part of india the central government who has the power to make law for whole or any part of a state the state government it is because of this reason when covid uh, when when the covid breakout happened the prime minister of india came and he said that the lockdown will be there in india for next 14 days or from 23rd of march maybe from this date the lockdown will be there and then further he extended now who gave him the permission to make such kind of law who gave him the permission article 245 article 245 says the central government has the power to make law for whole of india or any part of india so only you would have seen many laws also uh, you would have seen many laws uh, uh, before which read as it is applicable able to whole of state excluding the state of jammu and kashmir something like this you would have learned something like this you would have heard at least if not learned you would have heard at least why sir it is because of this reason because the law uh, the article 245 gives the power to central government to law to make law for whole of india or some part of india it is because of this reason only it is because of this reason only the central government can make their respective laws now central government made a law that there will be lockdown in the um, uh, in the country for uh, one particular uh, one entire month etc and after that also if you remember may month may 3rd i think may 3rd the lockdown opened the central government said that now going forward there is no lockdown but still after that also there were many states in which lockdown was continued there were many states in which lockdown was continued now how is that possible that uh, sir when central government has told there is no lockdown but still state government uh, in some state there are lockdowns it is because state government has the power to make law for whole or any part of that particular state state government the legislature of the state has the power to make law for whole or any part of their particular state their particular state now sir why are we learning this we are learning this because of article 246 now whatever we are going to learn is little important
Now there is an article called as article 246. In this article 246, there is a schedule called as schedule number 7. <coughs> There is a schedule called as schedule number 7. This schedule number 7 consists of 3 list. And it consists of what sir? It consists of 3 list. It consists of 3 list. What are those 3 lists sir? Union list. State list. And concurrent list. This particular this particular schedule schedule number seven schedule number seven consists of what sir schedule number seven consists of three list union list state list and concurrent list schedule seven consists of how many list it consists of three list union list state list and concurrent list union list state list and concurrent list union list consists of various different matters or various different activities in respect of which only the central government has exclusive right or power to make the law in union list there are various different items there are list of items in respect of those items who can make the law only the central government can make the law state list contains various different matters or activities in respect of which only the state government can make the law concurrent list contains list of various different matters in respect of which both central government and state government can jointly come together and make the law they both can jointly come together and make the law in this union list see union list who can make the law central government state list who can make the law state government and concurrent list who can make the law both jointly by central government and state government law can be made jointly by central government and state government now in this union list there is an entry okay there is an entry entry number 82 entry number 82 of the union list says entry number 82 of union list says that the central government has the power to collect taxes on income it can collect taxes on income except on agricultural income the union list says Central government has the power entry number 82 which entries are important for your MCQs important for your MCQs entry number 82 of your union list says the central government has the power to collect taxes on income except on agricultural income so you would have seen central government uh, if you would have seen you would have seen i mean you would have heard also maybe that there is no tax on agricultural income sir why is that so because the power is given like that only the law gives the power in that manner only the law says the central government can collect taxes on income except on which income except on agriculture income the law is made in that manner the law says the taxes can be collected on income entry number 82 says entry number 82 of union list says the central government can collect the taxes on income except on agricultural income sir can i say that uh, whatever income tax government is collecting whatever income tax government is collecting that goes directly to the central government yes why sir because the power to collect income tax is given to whom the power to collect income tax is given to central government in union list who uh, to whom is that power given it is given to central government so whatever income tax is collected no the amount will go to central government union list ent number 82 taxes on income so if you are earning any kind of income salary or earning you will have to pay the taxes you have a property you have given that property on rent yes 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 you have to pay the taxes you are doing some kind of business you are earning income yes 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 you have to pay the taxes now who can collect these taxes central government sir i am doing agricultural activity sir i am earning income out of agricultural activity should i have to pay the taxes answer is no why central government has the power to collect the taxes on all the income except on agricultural income Sir, does that mean that on agricultural income tax is never collected, sir? No, 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 no. The tax on agricultural income is collected by state government. In state list, there is an entry called as entry number 46. In state list, there is an entry called as what, sir? Entry number 46. This entry number 46 of the state list talks about taxes on agricultural 
इनकम दिस एंट्री नंबर फोर्टी सिक्स ऑफ द स्टेट लिस्ट टॉक्स अबाउट वॉट सर एंट्री नंबर फोर्टी सिक्स ऑफ द स्टेट लिस्ट टॉक्स अबाउट टैक्सेस ऑन एग्रीकल्चर इनकम सो इफ यू आर पेइंग एनी टैक्सेस ऑन एग्रीकल्चरल इनकम इट इज बिकॉज एज ऑफ नाउ इन इंडिया देर इज नो टैक्स ऑन एग्रीकल्चर इनकम नो स्टेट गवर्नमेंट इज ऑल्सो कलेक्टिंग द टैक्सेस बट कैन स्टेट गवर्नमेंट कलेक्ट द टैक्स ऑन एग्रीकल्चर इनकम एंसर इज यस before no before before meaning maybe uh, 50 years be, uh, back actually before there was taxes on agricultural income which was collected there was tax on agricultural income also before state of karnataka state of maharashtra they were collecting tax on agricultural income and obviously you would have seen many movies also long time before what sir before independence before independence the british government was collecting taxes on agricultural income you would have seen a movie of amir khan called as lagan and you would have seen uh, in triple r is there a case uh, yeah i think in triple r also maybe they would have not shown that particular scene where, but they are collecting taxes on agricultural activity correct people in india are doing agricultural activity and they are collecting taxes on all those things etc you would have seen a movie called as uh, what is which is that movie of rajnikanth uh not shivaji the boss there is one movie you know where in uh, he is uh, king of uh, uh, in mysore palace the shooting etc happened anyways some movie some movie okay in that movie also you would have seen that they are collecting taxes the british government was collecting taxes on agriculture income so can tax be collected on agriculture income answer is yes who has the power to tax collect such particular tax it is only the state government who is giving that uh, permission to the state government I, I, permission is given by entry number 46 of state list entry number 46 of state list is giving permission to whom the state government to collect taxes on agricultural income now union list no so concurrent list concurrent list does not talk about any tax law they talk about general laws they talk about general laws say for example they talk about child child labor abolition act the minimum education so uh, a child up to the age of 14 years he should uh, uh, the education is compulsory for uh, them then women protection act etc the indian contract act then we have indian penal code etc all this particular different types of act which is there in respect of this who can make the law both central government and state government they can jointly come and they can make the law they can jointly come and make the law in respect of all this particular things where is this given this is given in the state list where is this given sir this is given the state list so as of now we have understood what sir as of now we have understood uh, the constitution of india uh, not the entire constitution of india from our taxation perspective what were the different articles which is important we have understood that article 265 article 246 and article 245 where in article 246 is little important entry number 82 and entry entry number 80 uh, entry number 46 of this state list entry entry number 82 of union list entry number 46 of the state list is little important from your mcqs now now let me just discuss one more small okay uh, okay so i'll do one thing i'll do one thing i'll just give a small break small cut and then let us continue the class